want your freedom? Do you want your freedom? Do you want your freedom? Certainly, Lord. Certainly, certainly, certainly. What's been going on in Mississippi? I live in Sunflower County, which is one of the poorest counties in Mississippi. And there are people here who don't have food to eat or clothes to wear. And I organized a petition to get some commodities. But while we're waiting for them to come, I've received this shipment of clothes from the north. Look at that big old box. And I'm going to give these out in the community. Did the mayor send y'all here? I heard the mayor's been sending people to my house because he heard that about this shipment of clothes. But let me tell you something. The mayor has nothing to do with the distribution of clothes. <laughs> But let me tell you what you can do. If you go and register to vote, then you can come get clothes and you won't have to stand in line as you're doing now. I can't see too good, but it looks like some more people are coming down the road. It looks like they might be coming too. The mayor sent them too. What's that you said? You said the mayor told you to just take the clothes? Let me tell you something. I don't tell the mayor what to do, and the mayor doesn't tell me what to do. <laughs> but what you can do is go register to vote, and when you register to vote, you can come get some, you can come get some of these clothes. I know what can happen. It's all happened to me. Let, let me tell you. The, there was a time when I was a sharecropper, and I had worked, and a timekeeper, and I had worked on the same farm for 18 years. And I went to a mass meeting, and and at that meeting was the first time that I found out that I could register to vote, and that I could vote. That it was in the Constitution that because I'm an American citizen, that I had the right to vote. No one had told me that. I was in my 40s when I found out that I could vote and that, I, that, that as an American citizen, we had the power to pick our leaders. And if we don't like who's in office, we can vote them out. Right. But nobody had told me that. And at that meeting, they, when they asked who would like to go register to vote, I decided I was gonna do it. The, the problem was that in, in Mississippi and in other, in other parts of the South, D d um, during this particular time, if if uh, if a person who looked like me goes to register to vote, we could lose our jobs, and that's exactly what happened to me. Mm. And I knew that I knew I knew that other thing other worse things could happen, but I didn't care. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, mm. and I wanted to make a change, mm. so I went. And I went to register to vote. And I had to go more than one time. Because the, what, what they would do was they would give us these really hard tests mm. to discourage us from voting. And they took us in two at a time to take this test, and we failed it. Mm. It was questions about the Constitution, and I didn't learn that in school. I, I didn't go that far in school. And so, so the first time I took the test, I failed. And I told them, I'll be back in 30 days. Mm. And I kept going back and kept going back until finally I passed the test. Yes. And they registered me. Yes. And when, after we left the county seat to go register, and I got to my home, I was greeted by my family who told me that the owner of the plantation where we lived had come, had, had come to the house and he was angry because he had heard that I put my name down to register. And he said, Fanny, do, do you know what you just did? We're not ready for that in Mississippi. Mm. And I said, well, Mr. Marlowe, sir, I did not register for you. I came to register for myself. Mm. And I had to leave that same night. Mm. Our family ha had, to, had to leave the home where we had lived and worked for 18 years, mm. all because I wanted to register to become a first-class citizen. Mm. And you know what else happened? You see these bruises on my legs? I was, going, I was coming back from a voter registration workshop in Winona, Mississippi, uh, and we had stopped in Winona, Mississippi. 
And I was on the bus, but a couple of people had gotten off the bus to use the washroom or, and to get food. And the state highway patrolman and the chief of police were there and ordered them out. Mm -hmm. And I had stepped off the bus to see what was happening. And the officer said, get that one there. Mm -hmm. And told me I was under arrest. Mm -hmm. And they put me in the police car and they kicked me. And they took me to that jail cell. And I was in that jail and I received the worst beating of my life. Mm. They beat me till my body was hard as metal. Jesus. All because I wanted to register and, and become a, be treated like a first class citizen. And so I know what can happen. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that if you're tired of waiting, if you're tired of saying we shall overcome, and wondering when things will change and when things will get better, I'm telling you, you need to go vote. Yes. You need to go register to yes. vote because that's the only yes. way things are going to change yes. is if we vote yes. and if we let them know that we're not afraid. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you again, if you want some clothes, anybody tired of waiting? Yes. Anybody sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yes. Anybody yes. ready to go to the courthouse? Yes. Will you go to the courthouse? Will you go to the courthouse? Will you go to the courthouse? Certainly, Lord. Certainly, 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 Lord. Do you want your freedom? Certainly, Lord. Do you want your freedom? Certainly, Lord. Do you want your freedom? Certainly, Lord. Certainly, 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 Lord. Awesome. <coughs> I was running for Congress in the state of Mississippi. Mm. And in I was I was running for Congress in a state where not not many of the not many of the people who lived there could actually vote. Mm. So during Freedom Summer, we held mock elections because we we were even though we were even though it was our right to vote, there there were di different different things that were in place to discourage us from voting. So we held these mock elections, and I was chosen and I was chosen in the mock election to to be to be the senator in the second district. Mm. So. So there were three of us, three women from Mississippi. All right. Mrs. Devine and Mrs. Adams and myself. We we went to Washington D.C. at the uh, when at the opening session of Congress, and we wanted to see if democracy was real. We came to D.C. to unseat the five delegates from Mississippi because we felt that that they were not elected by the people. You hear the saying, by the people and for the people? Mm -hmm. Well, we found it to be by a handful, of a handful, and for a handful. Oh. <laughs> so we came to Washington, D.C. to attempt to unseat these five congressmen. And we, we weren't allowed to enter. We weren't allowed to even be in the room where the congressmen were. And the protesters could not protest in, in, inside where, the con, where, where Congress was meeting. So, protesters lined up in the tunnels le leading into wh where Congress was meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish you could have seen the looks on the faces mm. of those congressmen and their aides as they walked past. Mm. And the, the protesters were standing there, not saying a word, just standing there. Oh, look there. Mm -hmm. There's my opponent, Senator Eastland. <laughs> but we were determined. We weren't allowed in, but we stayed. And, and, the, and w when we attempted to unseat those five congressmen, they, they ended up being provisionally seated. But that day, a third of Congress voted in favor of us and voted to unseat. 
I would like to tell you in closing a story of an old man. This old man was very wise, and he could answer questions that was almost impossible for people to answer. So some people went to him one day, two young people, and said, We're going to trick this guy today. We're going to catch a bird, and we're going to carry it to this old man. And we're going to ask him, This that we hold in our hands today, is it alive or is it dead? If he says dead, we're going to turn it loose and let it fly. But if he says alive, we're going to crush it. So they walked up to this old man. And they said, this that we hold in our hands today, is it alive or is it dead? He looked at the young people and he smiled and he said, it's in your hands. Do you want